It's apparently Shark Week in Knoxville. Uh, we'll talk about that, plus who's in and who's out headed to Saturday at the Nationals. We'll also talk about other Thursday results and some good news for your Friday. Let's go. It's Friday, August 12th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Night number two of the 2022 Knoxville Nationals is in the books, and there continues to be no lack of things to talk about. After night one, it was all about the comments and complaints about the format and the track conditions, but last night we had a nice turnaround, and it was all about the racing. We have our top 16 starters in Saturday's main event set. We've got a team who didn't come to mess around, and we've got uh, big chargers and plenty more to discuss today. We'll start with Shark Racing. Wednesday night, Logan Schuhart dominated the first prelim night feature, but that wasn't a big shock. Logan has been good at Knoxville in the past, and he won the Capitani Classic on Sunday leading into the week. There have even been some mentions of Schuhart as a potential win pick for the big show. What I don't think anyone expected, though, was his Shark Racing teammate in Jacob Allen to show up last night and keep the party rolling. In 17 previous features at Knoxville, Jacob had averaged worse than an 18th place finish, and his best run in that stretch in any race was a 12th. You know, he did that a couple of times. Just a few months ago, when the Outlaws were through in June, Jacob had results of 21st and 25th. So I doubt anyone had money on the 1A to lead all 25 laps and pick up the Thursday night win. But that's exactly what happened. And not only did he win, he had to fight off multiple challenges in the closing laps from Brad Sweet. And that was also with the 41 of Carson Macedo closing down on the top two as well. So this was no walk in the park for Jacob. So two prelim nights down and a complete shark sweep so far. The big mover in last night's main event was Kyle Larson. He had to go fifth to second in the night's B main after missing the feature transfer from Heat 2. And then he drove from 22nd to fifth in the feature to earn the night's hard charger award. It was a supremely entertaining, uh, entertaining night with racing all over the place, all through the field. Uh, and now we've got the first eight rows for the 61st Knoxville Nationals main event set. Incredibly, Austin McCarl will lead the field to green after he went fifth uh, quick in qualifying, eighth to fourth in his heat, and seventh to fourth in the feature to end up as the high point man for the week. McCarl is joined in the locked-in group by fellow Knoxville regulars J.J. Hickel and Tasker Phillips. All three were mighty impressive these first two nights. Uh, so McCarl on the pole, Tyler Courtney will start second, Donnie Schatz and David Gravel are on row two, Carson Macedo and Kyle Larson on row three, Brent Marks and Darren Pittman on row four, nice work there from Pittman and that Hefner crew, Brad Sweet and Hickel are on row five, Jacob Allen and Parker Price Miller on row six, Justin Sanders earns a main event start with Swindell Speed Lab, he's joined by Buddy Kofoid on row seven, this will also be Kofoid's first main event start uh, in his rookie uh, try here. And rounding out the first eight rows is Phillips and Aaron Reitzel. We talked yesterday yesterday about the event points and who was in trouble after night one. And as expected, Gio Selzy and Logan Schuhart are on the outside looking in. According to Knoxville Raceway's Eric Arnold, Logan Schuhart becomes the first ever prelim night winner to not be locked into the Saturday feature. He and Selzy will lead the B main to green come Saturday night. And also in the B are Linton Jeffrey, Zeb Wise, James McFadden, Justin Peck, Cole Macedo, Ian Madsen, Casey Kane, and Tim Kading. The top four in that B main will earn starting spots 17 through 24, the main event. The rest of the field will take part tonight in Hard Knocks qualifying night and see if they can race their way in. Some names who will compete tonight include Corey Day, Anthony Macri, Hunter Schoenberg, Shane Gulbick, Sheldon Huddenshield, Brian Brown, Rico Abreu, Corey Eliason, Spencer Basin, and Kerry Madsen. The top four finishers in tonight's feature will grab the final four spots in the Knoxville Nationals on Saturday night. With all the talented guys starting up front, I think we are in for a wild show on Saturday. Plenty of experience, some newbies, and kind of all the storylines you can handle here. I said earlier in the week on the Passing Points podcast that I thought uh, that I uh, that I was going to pick Brad Sweet this week, and we'll stick with that selection headed into the weekend. The DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula is giving the slight edge to Kyle Larson over Donnie Schatz. Friday's Hard Knocks program starts at 7.15 p.m. Central Time tonight with hot laps, followed by qualifying at 7.45 and opening ceremonies at 8.30. If a trip to Knoxville tonight and tomorrow isn't in the cards, make sure you're di uh, dialed in over on Dirt Vision. And I don't know if things have been updated, but during the broadcast last night, Tony Bakov mentioned there were only 180 tickets left for Saturday's main event. So if you want a ticket to the Saturday show, it's going to be very difficult to come by. At Florence Speedway last night, if you're a late model fan, we were supposed to get double features for the opening night of the North-South 100, but rain popped up during the program and the series was forced to cancel the night's racing. 
Refund arrangements are being made by the track, so check with them this morning if you were there last night. Tonight's schedule is the same as what was uh, supposed to happen last night. We've got split field main events, 5,000 to win uh, each of those features. The results from tonight now will determine lineups for Saturday's $75,000 to win program. We ended up having 55 cars take part in qualifying last night, so no lack of good teams are in attendance this week. And I'm not making win picks for tonight, but for tomorrow, the DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula likes Tim McCready. I'm going to go Davenport here to just continue adding more uh, big money to his season total. Both tonight and tomorrow for the Lucas Lay models will be live over on Flow Racing if you cannot get to the racetrack. In other racing from Thursday, Tony Jackson Jr. picked up the MLRA win at CJ Speedway. He topped Spencer Dirks and Chris Simpson for the $8,000 victory. Chad Simpson is leading the way right now for the MLRA championship. Uh, Johnny Scott trails him in those standings. And last night at Dallas County, Darren Fuqua bagged his first career USMTS win. He outdueled Terry Phillips, Jake O'Neill, and Jason Hughes to do so. Series moves to Lakeside Speedway tonight for the $20,000 to win Grant Youngin's Memorial. Before we get ready to shut it down for the week, I've got a little bit of good news for your Friday at Coles County Speedway in Illinois tonight. They are having their weekly program that features six classes of micros. And there will be a pair of Keith Coons cars in the field, one for young Tate Gurney, who will be making his restrictor debut, and another for Dazen Persley. This will be Dazen's first time back behind the wheel since he suffered that spinal cord injury in the USAC midget feature at Arizona Speedway back on November 13th of 2021. I know it's been a long road as he continues to recover and rehab from the injury, but it's incredible to see that he'll be back in a race car this weekend. He was just starting to get rolling with his career when he had that crash. Going into that night, he had two wins, 14 top fives, and 25 top tens and 32 USAC National Midget races last season. This is just obviously another step in the process for him, but it's a big one. Good luck to him and Tate tonight as they go racing at Coles. Uh, if you bought Dirt Tracker shirts or decals over the past 24 hours since we launched the new online shop, first, thank you. Uh, second, all of the orders are in the mail today, so you should have them in the coming days. If you haven't grabbed a shirt yet, you can find both the sprint car and late model versions over at shop.dirttracker.com. I'm actually wearing the sprint car version today. Shirts are 30 bucks, but that price does include both sales tax and shipping. So when you add them to the car and check out, 30 bucks is 30 bucks. Uh, the two sizes of decals are there as well. Uh, I am down to my last seven of the small decals, so keep that in mind if you do want to order. I've also had questions about shipping to Canada and Australia, and I would like to make that happen in the future. I just have a few things I need to figure out first, uh, you know, how sales tax works, you know, and, and what shipping options I'm going to provide there. Uh, so I'll keep you posted as I make progress there. But again, if you want to grab some Dirt Tracker merch, shop.dirttracker.com. We've got nearly 40 shows on today's streaming schedule with a lot more to come this weekend across the services. The top shows uh, are obviously the Knoxville Nationals through Saturday on Dervision and the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series North-South 100 from Florence. That's on Flow Racing. From there, we've got the USMTS on Race and Dirt, uh, both tonight and tomorrow, and a ton of local and regional action coming up. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Drop me a comment on YouTube or on social. Let me know your dirt racing plans and win picks for the weekend. I've got to work the day job, but I will be sure uh, to be tuned in, keeping an eye on both Knoxville and Florence over the next two days. That's it for the show today and for the week. Enjoy the dirt racing weekend ahead. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them uh, in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back on Monday for more Dirt Tracker Daily. 